At this time on Wednesday mornings, we are joined by medical professionals. I say professionals because we have a series of them that come through from Tripp Family Medicine. Today, actually, it's the namesake himself, Dr. Jonathan Tripp, joining us in studio. And call it Better Health with Tripp Family Medicine. You're listening to News Radio 1310 KLIX and NewsRadio1310.com. And I, Bill Colley, will be answering the telephones because the doctor sometimes stirs up a hornet's nest or two on some of these issues. Uh, <laughs> never. <laughs> I, I have no controversial points of view whatsoever. <laughs> and he's talking today about winter. Actually, today it's raining. Uh, but we've gone through some cold weather and probably more snow than we've seen in, in some recent years. And uh, we're talking specifically about how it impacts people's, we used to call it mood, uh, but some people are very depressed this time of year. Yeah, no, th- today is a perfect example of why people that say they hate winter hate winter. It's just, it's dark, overcast, the sun comes up really late, uh, you know, snow. Some people say, hey, I tolerate that a lot better than I do rain or vice versa. But, you know, this morning you got... Snow that's melting all over the place, so instead of snow, you have mud, and now you got rain on top of that. You know, this is not exactly your vacation destination today. <laughs> no. So this this is, uh, you know, I'll start out by giving you all the reasons to feel depressed. Um, but really, what we're talking about is how to beat this, how to make winter a good time and, uh, you know, enjoy it and uh, give yourself a little perspective, you know, that spring is on the way, even though we're in January, and that doesn't seem possible. Uh, but there's a lot of things we can do right now on a daily basis that'll help us get through this a lot better. Uh, and, you know, not the least of which is, has to do with lights. Um, so we're going to talk about lights and, and things you can do and you can eat, uh, you know, and I won't try to tell anybody to binge on anything, but it's really funny. But uh, one of the best uh, mood enhancers is chocolate. And that doesn't mean, you know, you buy the uh, five-pound Hershey's bar and eat that. It's a little goes a long way, and it actually has lasting effects. It's not just for the next hours, you know, after you eat it. So that's kind of a fun one. It, 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 you know, you're talking a little bit about seasonal affective disorder. I won an award uh, actually doing a story about that 25 years ago. Yeah. But I was shocked at the time by the number of people who it actually impacts. I mean, it's a large number of our, our neighbors who actually deal with it. I, I have a fun statistic uh, that I uh, read as I prepared for today, and that is only about 1% of people in Florida will have any significant what's called, you know, winter blues or uh, seasonal affective disorder. And yet you go to the northernmost parts of the U.S., which would include, you know, northern Idaho, northern Minnesota, things like that, and it's about half of everybody. So if you look next to you, probably either you or the guy next to you already has this or pretty close where we live. I think it's, yeah, you know, you mentioned that I've seen anecdotal evidence. A couple of my friends I went to high school with, they live in Florida now in the uh, area around Bradenton, and they send me all sorts of pictures on Facebook when they're at the beach nearly every day or they're out for a walk and doing those things, and clearly that helps beat whatever the rest of us are dealing with. It does. In fact, uh, when we get into winter, we want to pull back, we want to, you know, cuddle up, stay inside, and we, you know, basically don't want to do anything. And a big part of that can be overcome by getting up, getting out, and doing something. And and that's the hard part is taking the first step to actually do something. I'll tell you what, my my alarm clock went off a lot earlier than I got up this morning. And and we've been making, I say we because my whole family has been making some uh, pretty significant efforts to exercise, whether it be in the morning or in the evening or both. And uh, that is a huge change in your mood. Would a trip to the gym do it for a lot of people? Absolutely. Uh, because... Whether you're lifting weights, whether you're doing the treadmill or the elliptical or in the swimming pool, any of that uh, produces, after about 20 to 30 minutes, you're producing endorphins that say, hey, I feel good. Uh, and not only that, but you feel a sense of accomplishment because you did it. And so it's a, it's a two for one when you do exercise, even if it's going outside and walking. Um, I'll... You know, there, there's lots of options, but I, I often think of walking, and not everybody can, but for those that can't, you know, dance and ski and, you know, get out and do hardcore physical exercise, the, just the act of walking for about 30 minutes makes a huge difference in your demeanor uh, for the rest of the day or even the day that's, you know, that follows. So lots of, lots of benefits to exercise. A little goes a long way. It does not have to be super strenuous. It's the act of doing it seems to change what's going on in your brain as well as in your in your mood. Maybe even break some of your habits to your daily habits. Maybe go to the mall and see a movie or 
do something like that on a, on a weekend that you might not normally do uh, maybe helps reset that attitude a little bit. Something, something to change things up. It's interesting because I, I brought along uh, kind of a list of things that do have some uh, study basis behind them. But what I found really interesting is help somebody else. You know, wait a minute. You know, we're talking about I feel down. I feel, you know, like I don't want to do anything. I have no energy. Why would I try this? But whether it's you shoveled somebody's driveway or you went and helped at, uh, you know, our, our soup kitchen, you know, helped. Uh, I, can, I can't even hardly think all the options. But, you know, sometimes it's you just see a need, fill a need is to steal a line from a cartoon movie I like. It'll, it'll, uh, we'll, we'll put it this way. If you're busy, you don't have time, I guess, to be depressed. We've got more coming up with Dr. Jonathan Tripp in just a couple of minutes. It's 840. 34, well, it was 35, and it, like I say, the temperature's been ping-ponging the last several days as I sit here. But 35 with some rain this morning. We've got more on the way with the doctor in just a few minutes. And if you've got a question or comment about a subject today, feel free to give us a call at 736-0300. It's Better Health with Tripp Family Medicine. Right here on News Radio 1310, KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. Joining us in the studio, Dr. Jonathan Tripp. Uh, Better health with Tripp Family Medicine this morning on News Radio 1310, KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. Of course, the doctor is talking about, well, just some difficulties we have this time of year. Uh, and we were just chatting about seasonal affective disorder a couple of minutes ago. and. I was telling him, I said, I remember uh, there was a magazine article I saw about this probably way back in the late 80s, early 90s, where a fellow was sitting in a chair and he was sitting by this rectangular light and it said that it helped reset his mind and helped him uh, get through or battle that depression he might have with what's called the SAD, is the word they use for seasonal affective disorder. I like the way you say he reset his mind. Does that mean that he got a clean slate and got to start yeah. over? <laughs> I wonder if a little switch went off. That's right. You know, you know when he's done, when it cooks like the toaster, it goes bing. You know, so. <laughs> no, what you're talking about actually is true light therapy, they call it. In fact, the, they call them light boxes, so that's probably what you were seeing in the article. And they're a special fluorescent light that emits uh, UV rays similar to the sun uh, that basically helps maintain your circadian rhythm. So these light boxes are primarily used in the morning as a way to simulate uh, you know, the sun coming up but actually as if you were outside. And they really they really can change mood, especially for those that are feeling truly depressed with the weather the way it is. That would be a great thing to choose to have at your house or put, they have smaller ones that you could put at your desk if you have like a cubicle. Um, you know, you, some people would probably notice that this week going back to work after the holidays that, you know, you're surrounded by grouches or you are the grouch. And that has everything to do with what's going on with weather and mostly what's called your circadian rhythm because if you compare the sun when it comes up in the summertime compared to when it comes up now, you have about a two-hour difference uh, where we live. And if you go farther north, it gets as high as four hours difference. I mean, that's that's the perfect scenario for jet lag that you're just all messed up. Where do you start? Your body's trying to figure things out. And so as a result, you feel like, well, the sun's not up. I should sleep longer. Mm -hmm. And the truth is, is maintaining what's called good sleep hygiene, meaning you maintain a schedule. You tend to do better if you maintain that schedule. And adding light therapy to that when you first get up for about 30 minutes would be awesome. So, you know, there's some other things that you can do um, that I'm I'm a proponent of, and that is get your vitamin D levels up. Almost everybody in, uh, you know, Southern Idaho has low vitamin D. It's funny. I have people say, oh, you know, I take 1,000 units a day or I take 5,000 units a day. Most of those people, when I do the blood work and check their vitamin D, are still low. And so it's not that I'm a proponent of taking, you know, mega doses for long term, but part of the therapies I use in my office are uh, higher than what you can get over the counter uh, for a few weeks. And that often changes mood, changes outlook even a little bit of energy level. And this is, you know, it's not an antidepressant, but it's, it's, a, it's a vitamin that to- does very much affect what your mood is like. And vitamin D, usually we produce from our skin exposure to sunshine. So you're not getting a lot of that from October till about April in our territory. That, that light box, uh, when you were referencing that, 
I assume that if you prescribe it, that someone could actually get some insurance coverage on it too as well. But it's probably not really an expensive uh, item. It, it, it sounds as if it's fairly simple for someone to construct one of those. They are completely available over the counter. Uh, there may be some insurance benefit. I honestly have not prescribed one. I do think they're uh, worthwhile. Um, maybe we'll talk about putting one up in my office, you know, and make sure everybody's a little happier this time of year. Yeah, the, uh, <laughs> keep the staff bubbly because now that the, the now that the holiday is over, where there's not the candy pudding uh, that people have put out and the baked goods and everything else. Yeah, all all the fun foods are gone, and the uh, the diets are in in process, and so uh, especially if somebody's doing a low carb diet, they tend to feel even grouchier on top of all the the weather and sun effects. So we got to watch out this time of year that uh, if we're making good progress on losing weight, that we aren't doing it at the cost of our relationships. So. People who already suffer from uh, depression or uh, and issues with that on a on a regular basis, and well, I guess we used to call it manic depression years ago, and it's got a different name now. But yeah, bipolar disorder. Bipolar. This has got to be a very difficult time for them uh, when they reach January. It's dark, and and you know that that that, that lift they get during uh, the Christmas season is gone, and all of a sudden uh, they're looking ahead to several more months of this. This is where you've got to be worried about. Seriously, suicide prevention and some of those things too, I would imagine. Yeah, this this is a tough time in year for, you know, like we say, almost half of our population anyway. So if you have any kind of depressive tendency, this is a time where it's going to be tough on you. So what's really important is that you take preventative measures and say, let's get out, let's exercise. Let's make sure we're eating truly well-balanced diet, not a high-carb, not a low-carb uh, you know, not high protein, but really a truly well-balanced diet will keep your mood more even uh, instead of the wide swings. Because a lot of times people go to the sweets and, you know, they do have a little bit of a euphoria to them, but an hour later they just drop you like a rock. And so that, that up and down swing makes it harder. Um, let me just kind of throw out a couple others. Getting outside even though the sun's not out, really helpful. And that, what I was talking about, the walking, you know, go ahead, dress up if it needs, if you're really cold. But, you know, a day like today where we're, we're mid 30s and probably pushing up into the 40s, you know, you really only need kind of a light jacket or a windbreaker. Is, and if you walk a little bit faster, you'll warm right up and have to make sure you get back inside because you'll, you'll build up a sweat. And that's a great thing. You know, I mean, how many people just completely avoid it for days and weeks on end and then, you know, are waiting for May to show up. So I would really encourage getting outside. Now, here's a really interesting one. Planning a vacation. You know, we talk about Florida or California or wherever we want to go, the Caribbean, somewhere sunny. And it, it says, uh, this is one of the research articles, it says, longing for sunnier days at the beach? Research shows that the simple act of planning a vacation causes significant increase in overall happiness. I can relate to that, you know, if, if I know that the end of February I'm going somewhere, even if it's a, you know, a weekend trip somewhere, when I'm feeling picked on or the weather's getting me down, I can kind of put my hopes on, oh, well, I'm, I'm going to do something you know, later on. And, and so I can kind of tough through whatever I am feeling down about. So I thought that was funny that there's actually research to show that planning a vacation helps, not even necessarily getting there, but planning it. Dr. Jonathan Tripp is in studio with us this morning on Trip Family uh, from Trip Trip Family Medicine. I'll get that out. We call it Better Health with Trip Family Medicine. You're listening to News Radio 1310 KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. It's 851. We're at 34 and some rain showers in some spots, or at least a little drizzle. Another thing you have mentioned here is uh, listening to music. Upbeat music may be a remedy. You know, I to me these seem like obvious things to do. Uh, but the truth is is you know, if you're listening to, uh, you know, I'll even take classical, for example. If you're listening to uh, Mozart, who is, tends to be generally a brighter, faster-moving type of music, your mood is improved as compared to something that is, you know, a, a slower, more minor tune, uh, type minor keys. I think of uh, Dvorak. So there's my two mm -hmm. uh, claims to classical. But... It is true, if you're look, listening to upbeat music, whether it's pop or classical, whatever you want, you got 
smooth jazz, well, you can have really slow, drag you down in the mud smooth jazz, or you can have some pretty uh, fast-moving stuff. Uh, I, I have a favorite, the, the Rippingtons is a fun one. And, and they're just a big part of why I like them is because they're upbeat and fast-moving, and they, they do help change your mood. Yeah. You know, I find that whether it's summer or winter, but music is a big part of that. So pay attention to what you're listening to. My, my dad, uh, before he passed away, his last few years, he would go to bed listening to new age music, and there would usually be the sound of waves splashing in the background and birds chirping and the like. And, and some people I know say, don't do that while you try to sleep. But he actually said it helped him not off in the evening. Yeah, no, I think uh, something like that helps for the relaxation portion. In contrast, if you start your morning like that, you'll want to go right back to bed. So, yeah. <laughs> so it, it, does, uh, it does matter what time of day you don't want to stimulate your brain too much before you go to bed, but uh, if you're trying to get going in the day, brighter lights, getting outside, a little exercise, and uh, why not have some good music to go with it? Sleep is important, in, obviously, too, because uh, as you mentioned earlier, you've got to get into that rhythm and you've got to have some uh, standard where you go to bed roughly the same time every night and get up the same time in the morning. I always found if I was listening to talk radio in the evening, I had a difficult time going to bed. But if I had some light music on like that, it was easier. Uh, and and something about talk radio got my mind engaged, and I couldn't sleep. Could it be the uh, controversial topics they were bringing up? Possibly, gotcha. I, you know, it it, yeah. it it could well be. But but those types of things, I think most of us would never even think about. Yeah. And, and then you know, I, I recognized it simply because I was having that issue in the evening. Uh, and when I dropped that talk radio habit, I found it was easier to go to bed. Uh, but you know, that's trial and error, I guess, in that situation. But a lot of us have a lot of things we do, I'm sure, that are impacting this. Yeah, one uh, example, I've been talking about exercise a lot. If you exercise just before you go to bed, most people will have trouble going to bed because exercise brings endorphins into your brain, makes you feel better, more active. In fact, I'll give a great example. When I was about 17 or 18, I was involved in a uh, dance studio. So that's a revealing a little bit of my background. But... I uh, was taking a particular class because I wanted to learn a certain style of dance and got invited to take a whole lot more classes. And so I was dancing two hours a night easily all through most of my senior year of high school. And I was doing early morning activities and other athletics and then starting this about 7.30 at night and dancing till about 9.30 at night. And frequently, when I got to the dance studio, I was ready for bed because I was so busy with other stuff. And I found that as I did the dance, I came home at 9.30 more refreshed than before I ever was at 7 o'clock. So, you know, if you feel like, oh, I just don't want to do this today, you've come home, from, I've worked, and, you know, it's 6 or 7 o'clock at night, you know what? Pull out a little old dance video or pull out, uh, you know, a, a little workout video or go for a walk, and you'll find that after you're done, you'll actually have better energy, you'll feel better, and, uh, you know, don't, don't forget the things you can do with light and maybe even a little bit of vitamin D to help you get through this winter. But I think there, there's lots we can do getting out, especially if you have a family. Do stuff with the family. It, it, makes, it makes it that much more fun. I believe we have a telephone caller with us. And caller, you're on the air with Dr. Jonathan Tripp. Yeah, I don't have any problem getting to sleep at night. Um, my problem is the 4 o'clock in the morning brain switch that comes on. And uh, I'm not sure how to deal with that. Take your answer off the air. Okay. Uh, I, if I understand correctly, he'd like to sleep longer is what I think the right. real question is. Right. Um, and a lot of that can have to do what's going on in your brain. And if you're used to a 4 o'clock wake up because you have, you know, uh, you know, from my past family history, they had to get up and milk cows. So 4 a.m. is when you woke up, even when you didn't have cows. Uh, but... How to make that sleep last longer, um, that, that's a tough one. I know of uh, things we can do prescription-wise and even supplements, uh, but the truth is is if, if you're not exercising, that'd be my number one because if you exercise, you tend to sleep more soundly and for longer periods of time. So that's one I would encourage you to do, even though I'm not telling you to exercise just before bed. That would be a bad move. Um, but, you know, melatonin is a great supplement which will help you get to sleep but usually goes away in about three hours so that will be hard a lot of people will have trouble waking up early because their mind is spinning 
and there's actually some anxiety component to what's going on in their life or other stressors. Uh, so I'd try to get you to identify what's stressing me, what's what's playing in my mind that makes me wake up early, and sometimes just identifying what the underlying concern was is enough. Go to bed later, I guess, too. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we've got to wrap up, but uh, doctor, for people who like to contact the office, how sure. do they go about that? Yeah, we're uh, Trip Family Medicine, and on the web, we're uh, tripvalleymedicine.com. Uh, Facebook is also under Trip Family Medicine. We'd welcome your comments there. And then our phone number is 933-4400. That's 933-4400. And we are located on Fillmore Street across from the post office. And uh, we have same-day appointments for people that are sick. So if you're sick, give us a call. Went to the post office the other day. I was driving through the parking lot, and I thought, it's got to be Christmas all over again. I couldn't believe how busy it was. But. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, have a great day and pretend the sun is out and have some fun. We've got more coming up in, uh, after news, in fact, from Fox. That's coming up at uh, 9 o'clock. And, of course, you're listening to News Radio 1310 KLIX, newsradio1310.com. Top story with Bill Colley.